Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Today we're going to talk about the converse of the Pythagorean theorem. So this would be the opposite of the Pythagorean theorem that we learned. So you're going to need something to write with, the foldable and a calculator. So our goal of the day is to figure out what kind of triangles we're working with. So we have three types of triangles, acute, which acute means less than 90 degrees, obtuse would mean greater than 90 degrees, and right would mean equals 90 degrees. So today we're gonna to use the Pythagorean theorem to kind of help us determine what type of triangle we are dealing with. So how do we know if it makes a right triangle? So in order to be a right triangle, we must have a right angle. So a right angle, again, remember that means equal to 90. So we need to have a 90 degree angle somewhere in our triangle. And so how are we gonna tell if we are dealing with a right triangle? So first off, we're going to use the Pythagorean theorem. And if you recall, the Pythagorean theorem is a squared plus b squared equals c squared. Remember, this is a super important theorem that you want to remember for the rest of your math career. So if it's a right triangle, if I have a right angle, that means mo both sides of the equation must equal the hypotenuse. So how this works, so if we took this 12 right here and we squared it, so 12 squared plus the other leg, 16 squared, should equal 20 squared. So we know that 12 squared is 144. We have 144. We know that 16 squared is 256. And 20 squared is 400. So 256 plus 144 gives me 400. So this means 400 equals 400. Since this is a true statement, we would have that 90 degrees in the corner here. The reason I knew 20 was my C value because it was my hypotenuse or my longer side. Since I didn't know the angle, that would always be my longer side. So just a mental note here, maybe star, C equals longest side if it, we're trying to find what type of triangle we're dealing with. So what happens if it isn't a right triangle? So here's how we find out if it's obtuse or acute. So obtuse means if the hypotenuse number is big. So the way we kind of want to write this and make sure you jot this down in your notes, we always want to start with C squared. So if C squared is bigger than A squared plus B squared, then we would have an obtuse triangle. Okay, so that's saying that hypotenuse number, when I square that hypotenuse number, that biggest number, remember C is my longest side. When I square that C, it has to be bigger than the other two sides added together and squared. So then on the other hand, acute would mean C squared is less than A squared plus B squared. Okay, so then when I have an acute triangle, that C squared value has to be smaller than the other two combined. So then if we wanted to jot this down just from the last side, slide, excuse me, C squared equals A squared would mean I hope we're all thinking a right triangle. So these are the three different equations you're going to want to make sure that you have in your notes. Because if it's bigger, we can say it's obtuse. If it's smaller, we say it's acute. And if they equal each other, we know that it has to be a right triangle. So let's try some examples. So in example number one, we want to classify the triangle when its side lengths are 8, 18, and 24. So what this means is I need you to tell me or help me figure out if this is an acute triangle, an obtuse triangle, or a right triangle. So when we get started here, you can either start by drawing a triangle if you would like and labeling its sides, or you can kind of just feel out the numbers a little bit. The only one you have to know, it would be the C value. Okay, and the C value is the one that's gonna stand alone, so we wanna make sure that we figure that out first. So if I figure out the C value, remember in the last couple slides I said C is always my longest side. So out of these three numbers, 8, 18, and 24, which one would be the largest? I would say 24 would obviously be the largest. And then if we were still using my triangle over here, I would just label that. So with that being said, what we're going to start by doing is we're going to take 24 and we're going to square it. So now here, I like to draw a circle. And this circle is going to be filled in with either a less than sign, a greater than sign, or an equal sign and that would help me determine what type of triangle it is so i draw a circle and then we have 8 squared plus 18 squared so now we got to figure out what all of those are 
Okay, so 24 squared, if you type it into your calculator, would give you 576. I'm going to leave the circle because that reminds me to fill it in. 8 squared is 64, and 18 squared is 324. So then the last step here to see how these numbers relate, again, draw in that circle, but 64 plus 324 leaves me with 388. Now, if we compare the number 576 and 388, which number would be bigger? Obviously, they're not equal, so that takes out the right. But we can clearly see that 576 is a bigger number than 388. So since I drew that greater than sign, this would tell me since C squared is greater than A squared plus B squared, that means I have an obtuse triangle. So all you would really have to write is obtuse. But the way we figure that out is by using those um, equations from the previous slide. All right, in example number two here, we're going to do the same exact thing, except this time we have decimals. So the first thing we want to figure out is to determine which value is my C value. Again, that C value is always your largest number or the longest side. So my biggest number here would be 20.5. So I'm going to square that. I'm going to draw in that circle so I know to fill that in with one of my symbols, less than, greater than, or equal to. And I'm going to do 12.3 squared plus 16.4 squared. And now I'm just going to type all of these into my calculator. So if I type 20.5 and I square it in my calculator, I would get 420.25. Again, I'm leaving that circle so I know to fill it in. When I type in 12.3 squared, I get 151.29, and 16.4 squared is 268.96. Okay, now the last step then would be to combine what's on the right-hand side there. I'm just going to bring everything else down, even my circle so I know to fill that in, and 151.29 plus 268.96 in my calculator tells me that I get 4. 120.25. Now, if we look at these two numbers, 420.25 and 420.25, we see that they are the same number, so we would put an equal sign in there. The equal sign tells me that I have a right triangle. Okay, so remember, check to make sure, your first step is to make sure you figure out which value is C. Does it matter which one's A or B? Not necessarily, so then you plug in a squared plus b squared, you draw in that circle so you know that you have to fill it in with one of these three signs. These three signs help you to determine whether it's acute, obtuse, or a right triangle. All right, so in example three here, we have a little bit different of an equation. So here we have four, we have four squared to three, and we have 8. So we know the value of 4 and 8, but off the top of my head, I'm not quite sure what the value of 4 squared to 3 is. So what I would want to do in my calculator, I'd want to take 4 square roots of 3. And the decimal that this comes back with would be approximately 6.93. That tells me it's not my longest side. So then again, I'm still going to choose this value of 8 to be my C value. So when I start, I'm going to put 8 squared. I'm going to draw in the circle so I know I have to fill it in. 4 squared plus, I'm going to put this one in parentheses because this one's the one where it gets a little tricky. 4 squared is so a 3 squared. So 8 squared would give me 64. I'm going to bring down the circle. 4 squared is 16. Now here we got to take note. Do we notice that there's a 4 under here, or 4 inside the parentheses, and a square root of 3? This means that 2 on the outside has to be distributed to both the 4 and to the square root of 3. So I would get 4 squared times the square root of 3 squared. And the reason I'm doing this multi-step is so that you guys can understand what actually happens here. So 64, fill in the circle, 16 plus. Now I have, notice how I did that multiplication here because up here inside my parentheses, 4 squared to 3. There was nothing between the 4 and the square root sign, so I can assume multiplication. So here I just drew it in. So now I have 4 squared, which would be 16. Again, times the square root sign here, I need two of those. So if I do a little bit of side work over here, I'd have the square root of 3 times the square root of 3. And if I multiply those together, I'd get the square root of 9, which we know equals 
3. So what happens over here, long story short, what happens is that power of 2 cancels out that square root sign. These two go hand in hand, kind of like multiplication and division. If I square something and it has a radical sign, the radical sign ends up going away. So instead of having to do all this scratch work all the time, I can just see that that radical is going to go away and I'm going to be left with the 3. Okay, so then when I look at that even just a little bit further, 16 times 3 then, this 4 square root of 3 became 16 times 3, which is 48. So it's a little bit more math you have to do, but if we do it this way, instead of using my decimal, we're going to get a more exact answer. So then I get 64, leaving my circle, 16 plus 48 is also 64, so we notice that they're equal, meaning I have a right triangle. So again, remember, this might be a little confusing and that's totally okay, but make sure you jot down any questions. If this square root sign stuff doesn't make sense, put a question mark by it, star it, whatever you got to do, so that way when we get to class, we can address those questions and make sure that you understand before we work on the assignment. I want to thank you for taking good notes. Remember, please, please, please write down those questions so we can adjust or we can figure those out in class, and I'll see you when I see you.